Now that we have power back, welcome back to some more Stormworks. I'm Stormrunner Gaming, and today I'm here back yet again with my E7 hatchback. One of the highest, if not the most efficient vehicle in Stormworks. I'm not here to talk about the efficiency numbers of this car today. I'm here to talk about the microcontroller I've got in the trunk of the car here. And if we go around and read what it is, it is my cruise control microcontroller here. And I think let's jump into the workshop and see what's under the hood of this thing. If you guys enjoy this content, consider subscribing. It not only helps out the channel, but helps you keep up with my latest content here on YouTube. And as we are backing into the garage here, you can tell there's been a few changes with the number panels. And I do also have a cruise control active light over there as well, just to tell me when I have it active or not. So we should be close enough to just grab it and throw it in here. Let's get our activate tool and go into the microcontroller. And I'm going to kind of just move this mess over there for a minute or two. I'll talk about that in a second. Let's just get a brief overview of what's happening with the main logic of this microcontroller here. Of course, to get everything rolling, I have a JK flip flop at the top here, which handles the on and off value for this microcontroller here. I do also have a special off module here. It not only runs off that number two button, the whole microcontroller will also turn off when you hit your brake button here on the car. So I've got that WS connected up to a threshold with negative on it, and it'll turn everything else off just like that cruise control off button. So let's go from the JK flip-flop and follow just a couple things that it turns on. The first thing it does turn on with this pulse from that JK is the memory register, which is going to be holding the speed you want your car to cruise at, cruise it down the highway with. So we get that number just by grabbing the speed value and holding it in our memory register there. I did add another feature to the microcontroller as well. And a lot of modern cars kind of have a similar feature, if not this exact thing. But my feature to it is you're able to increase and or decrease your speed by one with those three and four buttons while you're driving. I did make them both toggle buttons and right now I'm not exactly sure why I did that. But since they are toggle buttons, I needed two pulse toggle to push buttons here. One being on and off, the other one being off to on connecting up to an OR and they set up this up down counter to increment by that one value. And that is connected up to our memory register for speed and sent over to the PID, the heart of this cruise control here. And if you guys are wondering how this little numerical switch box work or why it's here actually, is because if we don't have anything in this up down counter, we just tell it to take the number from the memory register there. But if there is a number, you know, anywhere from 0 0.1 to 999 or from negative 999 to 0.1, it'll turn it on and switch it over. So it kind of just ignores the and until we actually have a value in the up down counter there. Moving on, we do have a couple just simple controls connected to our PID. Well, first off, of course, we have those three numbers, which it's kind of a funny story, actually. I was talking about the like programming-esque challenge of creating a cruise control module in here in Stormworks with my dad the other day, and he actually found a really good programming article that had the exact uh, PID numbers that I needed for my microcontroller here. So I have to thank him for that. The only thing I did have to chain off of the PID to get the throttle for the engine here was I had to take the speed and divide it by the user requested speed here. That's just because the PID is not outputting a 0 to 1 throttle for our engine. It's outputting the speed relative to kind of try to get it up to speed, I guess. I don't know how to explain that exactly. So I can give you an example. Let's say you're going 25 and you tell the cruise control module here you want to go 45 now. So this PID might say 60 miles an hour, which basically means I have to divide 60 by that 45. And that means it's going to be, what, 1 with some change, 1.25 maybe? I don't know. Quick math was never my strong point here. 
but since the engine can only take up to a max of 1 for its throttle, I had to clamp that divide value between 0 and 1. And then we get into the mess that I kind of just shoved over to the side earlier. This is to help the cruise control module when you turn it on at speed. Which basically means, let's just put an example into perspective here. If you're going 30 miles an hour down the road and you turned on the cruise control module before I had all this mess down here, what would happen is the PID would start at zero and build up the RPS of the engine from there. Which what would happen with your car's speed was you'd go from 30 miles an hour, you'd dip down to maybe 10 miles an hour, and then you'd build up slowly from there until you hit that exact speed with your car. So what this kind of crazy system down here does is it takes a couple different measurements of speed and sees if you're going that fast, let's just say 25 miles an hour, and it'll hold the throttle of the engine at just a random number, maybe 50%, until the PID is higher than that number and then the PID takes over to push it a little bit further. So I've done a, a couple different mile per hour numbers here. I've done 20, 25, 30, 40, and I think 50, because that's the highest the E7 can actually do. So this kind of just, like I said, holds the throttle until the PID catches up. So instead of the speed dipping from 30 going all the way down to 10, excuse me, dipping from 30 down to 10, maybe it'll dip from 30 down to 25, and then that PID will catch up and push you back up to 30. So it's not as much as a speed loss, and it's not as noticeable as well from when you're driving it. When I didn't have the instruments telling me everything in front of my face, I didn't really notice that I decreased a little bit of speed before catching right back up to the exact speed. And this little setup right here on the left just holds the throttle at 25 as a baseline, so the engine does not stall out. Well, it actually holds the throttle at 25 before the... PID catches up to it because I think the engine did stall out once or twice on me before I had any of this started here especially when I took it on uneven terrain when it tried to go up a hill sometimes the engine would conk out on me and what I was talking about earlier with all the controls in my face something I like to do when I'm testing out microcontrollers is getting a lot of you know computer feedback from it with a couple different numbers here so I'll connect up just a couple digital displays in front of my face while driving to tell me, I think I had PID number here, the, oh, that's actually PID number here. I had throttle there, I think I still have this one set up, the speed we're holding, uh, subtract value, which I think is how many times you've hit, like add or subtract from that. So that's just something in my testing realm there. All right, let's get back to the main version and take it out to the road. Of course, if you guys do have any other questions on how I built through the logic there, or designed it, um, you can always drop it in those comments down below. I'm always happy to have a little discussion about logic. And if you think you can do it a little bit better than what I've done, I'm not perfect by any standard. So if you have a suggestion on how to, you know, streamline maybe that final process with all the numerical switch boxes, you can also leave a comment. Yeah, I might learn something from one of you guys out there as well to make it a better microcontroller. But enough of my blabbing about comments and whatnot, let's take it out on the runway for now, and let's just see it hold an exact speed here. So if I press 1 right there, we see we're holding 42.52 miles an hour, and it is dipping down a little bit while the microcontroller starts up here, but it should start to push that speed up in a second or two now, I hope. Microcontroller, please work. Hopefully I didn't mess it up by dragging stuff around and disconnect. Oh, no, I didn't mess it up. Okay, we're, we're getting up to speed right now. So we wanted 42.52. Let's see if the PID can get us that exact number with the car here. Something I have noticed with the PID controlling everything, I still have that four speed automatic gearbox. So sometimes the PID will shake a little bit up and down if the value is in between two gears here. So we're getting almost a, oh, there's the exact speed we want, 42.52. Oh, it had to drop down by 0 0.01 when I said something. 
Come on, just gain 0.01 miles of an hour before I... Oh, there it is. Now we still got a little bit of runway. Of course, this is the optimal ideal range for the vehicle right now to have the exact speed running. When you are on any terrained road with ups and downs, bumps and whatnot, you're probably almost never going to get the exact speed you want being held by it. But something else we can do, say you drive into a neighborhood now, speed limit's 25, we can drop that down by just spamming 4 a few times, and the PID will take care of it. It's actually a pretty nifty system. So what I was talking about earlier, when you are on a basic just up and down road like I'm on now, the speed will vary a little bit more than just that level terrain. As you can see, I bumped it up from 40 from the 25 we were holding earlier, and it is going to gain some speed real quick, but if we wa keep watching that speedometer, it's going to kind of just bump around up and down a little bit as we go over some bumps, ridges, and mountains here. And this is probably one of the hardest ways to drive a car. If you guys look up at the top of the screen right now, all I see is a little slip of the road. Oh, where's the road? Okay, there it is. I was trying to keep my cursor on that speedometer so you can see how the speed is going up and down here, there, and everywhere. But I'm also trying to drive the car, which is proving to be a bit of a challenge for me right now. But as you can see, it's doing its best to keep us around the exact speed we asked for, but it's only so close to being perfect here. So yeah, that is my cruise control module or microcontroller here in Stormworks. If you guys do want to play around with it for yourselves, I'm going to put it as a standalone microcontroller on the workshop. I do have to add a quick note there, footnote, whatever you want to call it. This system only works for the E7 at the moment. If you do want to slap it on your own car, you're going to have to find some speed values for all of those numerical switch boxes, which might be just a little bit difficult, probably a little bit more than difficult. It took me an hour or two to figure out those engine speeds, or excuse me, the engine throttle. I needed to hold it around a certain speed before that PID takes over. But anyways, yeah, that is where I am going to be ending this episode. So of course, if you guys did like this, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to stay up with Stormworks and more of my content. But I've been great at goodbyes, the people need me, and I need to go. Goodbye, car.